Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where we talk alignment, intuition, and our internal guidance system. We cover woo-woo topics in an approachable and practical way. I'm your host, Dana Evans of Alignful.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. This is episode 98. I want to say hello. I'm yawning again. (laughs) I just woke up from a two-hour nap. And you know how sometimes if if you ever nap, (laughs) believe it or not, I don't nap. I rarely nap. I know as actually as projectors, it's it's highly recommended to nap. And I often get very tired around between one and three PM. And I don't really either allow myself or choose to nap. I'm not fully sure which one it is, but it's just not something I do. But today I did and I have that feeling. (laughs) You're like when you wake up from a nap and you just feel kind of stunned, like all systems are offline. <laughs> we joke sometimes when we come home from a walk or if we've been out and we come home and like Mia, our cat, if she's been napping, like she still gets up to greet us, but you can tell she's like blinking her eyes and like shakes her head and she's just been kind of out. That's how I feel. <laughs> Man, I, it's funny. So Yesterday was Sunday. I had the best day. Our new washer and dryer came last week. And yesterday I did like every laundry I could think of. I washed all sorts of sheets. I washed towels and bedspreads and all of Mia's blankets and bath mats and my clothing. It was a big laundry day. And it was a wonderful day. I did house things, which I just absolutely love doing on Sunday. I did some more clearing out, which we'll be talking about in today's episode and had a really chill, nice evening after dinner. I was like, okay, I need to wind down because I've been like doing all day. Like it was a lot of energy of just constant go, go, go. It wasn't exhausting by any means, but it was a very focused energy day. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to go from that energy straight to bed because then I might not sleep very well. So instead, I decided to take a shower and do some of my practices. So I did dry brushing where you sweep. I've talked about that a lot on this episode. I did dry brushing and I did oil massage with my favorite Banyan Botanicals Mm -hmm. oil. They're balancing body oil. And it's tridoshic, so it supports all of your doshas. Vata, pitta, and kapha. It just felt so good. And I took a nice shower and then got out and did a little more body oil while my skin was wet so it could really absorb. And then I did gua sha, okay? And gua sha, I think I've talked about it on this podcast before, it's the stone. Mine's jade-ish. I think I should eventually get a really nice one. <laughs> of course, right? Christmas gift. But mine is, it's a crystal, some sort of stone. They have them in rose quartz. They have them in jade. They have them in just like basic stones. And they're this really cool shape, like kind of like a heart shape. And it's a facial massage stone. And there's all sorts of videos online about using it. In fact, I believe I have one on my YouTube channel, (laughs) which I should probably redo with my new level of knowing and understanding about this. But I decided to do that. I've been really intentionally working back in my facial practices. I got a facial reflexology tool. If you've watched my Instagram stories, I've been sharing a lot of that where you are working with acupressure points on the face, very similar to what you do with tapping or EFT, emotional freedom technique, where you're tapping on different pressure points of the face to release tension, anxiety, lower cortisol, 
Facial reflexology does a lot of that, as does gua sha. So I did this beautiful gua sha routine on my face last night. It was like almost 30 minutes where I was just tending to myself. That's kind of how I feel. You know how you tend to a garden? I feel that these type of practices are like tending to yourself and they're oh so necessary. And I then did a meditation, went to bed. Well, I slept okay. I was a little jumpy and edgy with my sleep, but woke up at 6.15 and just felt like, (laughs) truthfully, like really kind of tender and sore and worked in my neck area, which I did a lot of the gua sha there. So I think I moved a lot. A week ago, I was feeling when I got back from the mountains on Monday, on that Sunday, I had felt kind of a specific feeling that I know very well where my body's like, "Uh uh-oh, we're fighting something. I had a bit of a sore throat and just like, I just could tell. I was extra tired and I could just tell my body was like, okay, please let us do our healing work so you don't end up sick. I thank you, dear body. You're so magical, so beautiful because knowing that feeling and I stepped into the week last week very intentionally where it was very, I had minimal alcohol, minimal processed foods, maximal, (laughs) all my supplements. Like I really doubled down on my supplements, on my rest and hydration and just eating well. My whole thought last week was I'm going to support my body as it's doing healing. And every day from last Saturday, I just started feeling better and better. So I never really tipped into the sick zone. But I think the gua sha, there's so many lymph nodes that store stuff in your neck. I'm no expert in this. I just know that if you've ever had a massage or any sort of body work, sometimes it can break some stuff loose in your body and then you feel a little ill, like not so great the next day. Well, that's how I woke up today, this morning. I woke up feeling energized early, went and got to teach my amazing college students and I had them do a tapping exercise that I did for them. We did some beautiful movement, came home, knocked out some work. I was actually feeling really productive and then ate some lunch and around, yeah, like, 12, I was like, whoa, I'm feeling a little crazy now. And my neck was still sore. And then at one o'clock, I was like, all right. I'd watched a couple episodes of a show and I'm like, okay, that's not relaxing. I need to like lie down. (laughs) So I, I took my phone, laid down, did a meditation, which is usually a way I can get my system to like lie down in the middle of the day for an extended period of time is by doing a meditation. And then from that, I just iced out. And John actually woke me up. I think I laid down at one o'clock. I did like a half hour meditation. And then John came and woke me up at 3.45. He's like, um, you've been out for over two hours and I thought I should wake you up so that you can sleep tonight. (laughs) I was like, oh, hence here I am stunned, (laughs) blinking and recording this podcast because I really did want to do it today. So why, why are we talking about this, right? Well, because gua sha made me do it. No, just kidding. But it was really cool. One today, and usually Mondays are like this. It's pretty common for me that Mondays are very spacious. But today I had very little on the agenda and I, everything I wanted to get done or needed to get done, I actually did this morning. And so I had space, this beautiful gift of space to freaking just nap. And I know that is so amazing and a luxury. And a lot of people don't have that space or aren't willing to take it, right? There's two sides to that. But the space in my day, I really like to keep Mondays as spacious as I can because it's kind of a catch-up day. I often do admin work on Mondays. I often do anything that I didn't like work-wise or home-wise I didn't get done over the weekend. I like that space, right? 
And one thing that I've been working on, and I think this is a continuation from what we talked about last week, but one thing that unfolded for me was I need more space in my home. Last week, episode 97, I talked about the Clawfist project, the laundry room project, and how that's creating my own personal space within my home. But throughout that project, yeah, I don't think I had done this when I recorded last week. So, or maybe I had just done it, but my dad came over and helped me empty everything out of my laundry room so we could pull out the old washer and dryer and get everything ready for the people to come on Friday to take it away and give us our new one. And when when that happened, like I stepped back and I got every single thing out. And I looked and I was like, oh my gosh, this was all in my laundry room. And it was kind of like a shocking, humbling, startling awareness to have everything that was all tucked away in a poorly used space and shoved in places, have it exploded out into my living room and my dining room. And I'm like, why? Why is all this stuff in here? I don't use a ton. I don't use most of this stuff. It's just shoved in corners. Wow. So that was, it was a lot. And then I went to bed that night and I started thinking about well, if all that's shoved in that nook and cranny, like what else is shoved? Where else? I started thinking of all the drawers in my house and cupboards and well, the garage has been on my mind for a while, but just these different areas of the house where things are tucked away, hidden away and rarely seen or used. And I just didn't like it. Like, I just was like, I feel like everything's used up and I don't think it's necessary. Like I think John and I are holding on to things that we don't need, that we don't use. And I do run a pretty tight ship around here. I clean out my closet quite often, probably each quarter. And I, I'm not like a big clothes buyer person. <laughs> I keep it pretty simple in the clothes department, but I organize drawers like my linen closet. I go through that. Like I'm pretty good at keeping up with the mess <laughs> and the deeper cleaning of organization. But looking there, staring at what was in my laundry room, I'm like, something needs to shift because I don't want anytime I open up a drawer or a cupboard or a door, and if I were to pull everything out of that for it to be this big explosion of my insides on the outside. What if everything were more orderly all the time and less clogged. And that led me to, I opened Netflix this weekend. I don't know. I I haven't been feeling like watching normal shows, but I've been on the hunt for something like motivational or inspirational. And I had last week I'd watched Marie Kondo. And then I saw this movie called The Minimalists. And there's actually two on Netflix. I watched both of them. And there's a newer one, I think, that just came out. It's the same two guys, which I was not very impressed with. And then there was like the original one. And I really liked that one. And it just was the nudge I needed because obviously, as we've been talking, as I reflected, like everything has been leading me back to space. Like in so many ways, it's like my friend... Kimi told me, she's like, that's like the golden thread in your life and your work is you're always creating space, you're seeking space, you're holding space, you're beautifying space, right? And I do that in my own life. And that's exactly what I do with my clients. Like I help my clients find spaciousness in their lives so that they can dive deep and, you know, pull everything out of the closet and look at it and release it and then orderly (laughs) put things back in a more orderly fashion. So there's not so many hidden dark corners in their closets. Like literally that is the work we do. It's amazing. They get more space, physical space, emotional space, mental space in their lives by working with me. And of course, right, I have to practice what I preach. 
I am the guinea pig for so much of the work that I do with my clients and am constantly evolving and exploring my own relationship to space and what it means in my life, where I have an abundance of it, where it's lacking. And it shows up everywhere. And if you start threading this into your life and looking like, what is my relationship to space? You know, what is my relationship to having an empty shelf? Do I have to fill it? What is my relationship to my emotional space? Like, do I let things out or do I keep everything locked in a Tupperware that is sealed that I don't want to let it out? But if I were to open it, there'd be all of these ugly things that I didn't want to look at. (laughs) What is that relationship? So I just see how, especially this summer, I had a lot of space in terms of movement and freedom. I traveled a ton and I was in different spaces, different locations. I had a lot of energetic space. I had physical space, you know, from John and from my home. And now I'm back, right? My inner voices brought me home to really settle. And with that settling is this looking at my space through different eyes, you know, hence using the space differently. I'm even, I already have another contemplation of how I might reuse my living room, dining room area. And everything, it's just reminding me that I want more spaciousness in all aspects of life. And so not only do I desire and am I creating my own physical sanctuary, my clothes space, but I want to empty out the spaces in my life. And the minimalism documentary was really fun because they were just talking about how we as humans, or specifically Americans at the very least, we consume, consume, consume. And we hold on to stuff. And we're really emotionally, as humans, we're emotionally attached to things because we think the things are our memories. And then consumption can happen in the forms of like, and I trust me, I, this is very much me. Like you buy things that take up space without having a lot of intention behind them. Right. And like the high comes from hitting buy and then you, the thing comes and it might give you some excitement temporarily, but soon that wears off. And then all of a sudden you have like this new baseline of what's exciting. And then we need to keep buying more things to have the same hit. (laughs) And our lives are just could be this never ending more, right? And if you think about what we're kind of taught in terms of how we're living our lives, like it's like you buy your first home, right? And then, and this is really typical. I'm not saying we all are doing this. I certainly am not quite living this, but this idea, right, of what it means to be successful. It's like, okay, you find a partner right? Then you get married, then you have to buy a home, then you fill the home, and then you want to have a family, then you have kids. (laughs) So now you need a bigger home, and then you need more stuff, and then you need a second home, and then you need a storage unit because you don't quite have enough room for all the stuff. You don't want to get rid of the stuff. And it's like, there's kind of this trajectory, and this is what they talk about in the documentary. I'm more sharing that, but also these are my own reflections of if we're not careful, we end up in this life where we always need more, right? Bigger, better, faster, more. And we need to make more money, right? In order to support the more, the new things we want in our lives. And we consume a lot. And what happens though is, and I have just I've really seen this in myself is I love nice things. I love beautiful things. I love the best (laughs) and I support that. I think that's fine. I'm in favor of those. It's what I like, right? You like what you like. And I see where sometimes that tips in more of the unhealthy direction where I want things. So I just buy them, want it, buy it, want it, buy it, want it, buy it. And it becomes a lot more emotional, especially as like an emotional authority in human design. If I don't ride my emotional wave, 
and find like the calm clarity of a purchase, I end up with a lot of things that I don't necessarily want or need and are not necessarily like long-term, long-lasting pieces that I just love and items that I just love. And so all of that became clear in the emptying of the laundry room. I was like, oh, I just, I want less crap. (laughs) And I don't want to buy more things until I have a handle on what's already in my house and I get rid of things. So what I'm really seeing as the trajectory of this fall, don't get me wrong, my mind is like not super, my mind's like, no, we want the new things now. But what I'm seeing that I am being guided toward is to do a massive clear out, like to really approach it from kind of this minimalist Marie Kondo energy of looking at every item in my home and saying, does this spark joy? Does this have an intention? And does this have a functional purpose? And if it doesn't meet one of those categories, then I can lovingly release it. So I did that this weekend with my laundry room and I had this big pile of stuff that some was it was just like straight up trash. Like it's just no good to anyone. Then a beautiful pile of giveaway, including a ton of glassware and then a much smaller pile of keeping. And even like, as I started going through the glassware, I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to tackle this in multiple areas. So as I was going through glassware that was in the laundry room, I then opened up my cupboard that our coffee stuff is in. And I'm like, gosh, this is just packed full. There's no way I love all of these coffee mugs. And so I went through and I released a bunch of coffee mugs and a bunch of old traveler mugs. Like John and I aren't traveling that much with coffee. Like we're not driving to work anymore. Right. And so I released a bunch of those. And then I went through some of the upper cupboards in my kitchen. I didn't do the whole kitchen. And then I went into our bedroom and cleared out our nightstands. And I was like, oh my God, I had, for me, a big thing is like skincare products because I love them. But I also sometimes am weird about not wanting to use them up. And so I have a bunch of old skincare products and they don't, a lot of the ones I use are natural, even beauty counter, like they're, they expire usually in like six months because they don't have preservatives in them. So I released a bunch of those. I'm like, okay, no more beauty products until I use up what I have. And then I can intentionally bring in things one at a time as I need them. I have a, I'm going to do like a full deep dive of cleaning out my beauty products, but I just did the ones that were in my nightstand. Okay. (laughs) Beauty products and essential oils. And so it was so, I really got a lot of energy from doing this on Saturday And this is really interesting. So then John had like didn't work this weekend, which was some sort of unicorn magic. (laughs) So he was like relaxing and, you know, we were kind of doing some of the stuff. I straight up told him, I was like, you do not have to do any of these things. Like as long as you let me talk about it, please, you're welcome to just relax because I really like doing these projects when I have the energy for them. And when I have the energy, I just have to do them. (laughs) So like, I don't rope anyone else in unless they want to, but then we had decided to go pick up some pizza and get a beer at the local brewery. I was like, Hey, John's not working. Yay. But I didn't really want to leave. And this was at four, but then I had this awareness projector awareness of, Oh, if I don't stop now, I'm going to be stuck in on mode and then I'm going to do too much and burn myself out and then I won't have any more energy to do it. So I, I had that awareness. So we're driving to pick up the pizza and I just felt <sighs> my chest tightened. My energy dipped. Tears were bristling in my at my eyes. And I was like, well, whoa. <laughs> what is this? And I couldn't quite process it as we were driving. I was just aware. And I said, John, like, I don't know what happened, but like, I'm almost angry. Like I was just edgy, which was very interesting and just felt this kind of density and sadness. Then (laughs) I just really love telling these stories. I hope these are helpful and enjoyable to you all. I feel like I've all of a sudden hit this like 
where I'm just jumping on these episodes and like recapping life for you guys. So I hope it is supportive because there is an intention behind it, but I like to tell it in the form of like a winding story of how things unfold for me. Because as a coach, like as someone who does this work all the time, I'm in this constant state of awareness and connecting dots. And so I like to share that with you. So as I was in there, this is a really fun little random connection. I was remembering the last time I did a clean out of my actual closet, which I shared with you last week, I got really emotional too. And there's this energy of like picking up the dust, right? When you go through all your stuff, even if you're not actively emotional about it, if your mind doesn't think it, it's moving energy in your body. It's creating emotion. Well, not creating it, but it's waking up emotion that may have been dormant, right? It's like if you, you know, you're sneezing. I was actually sneezing as I was cleaning out the laundry room because all this dust got sent out into the air. It was settled and dormant, but then I moved a bunch of stuff. It got into the air. And it's the same thing with our energy and emotions. When you're going through your own stuff, you're touching items, you're releasing them, you're having memories, it can unsettle you. So I was like, oh, I think that's what's happening. Like I just, my energy's off. Only to realize, and there is this like interesting energy that morning I had felt it a little as well, but then I was focused all day on the doing. And so doing, I think we've talked about this. I talk about this with all my clients. Doing is a really great way to suppress emotions and ignore them, right? It's like such a great distraction until you stop doing and then they all come up. Okay. Just a reminder. And so then John reminded me that 10 years ago, that day was one of my dear friend's weddings. And that is also the day he and I broke up. And by he and I broke up, I mean, he broke up with me. (laughs) And that was our second breakup, like post-college breakup. I was devastated. And so we broke up that day. And also... In the craziest irony of all, that means that nine years ago that day, we got back together for good. So hello, emotion. (laughs) And just that morning, I had gone to like my old stomping grounds where I moved after John and I broke up and I felt this sense of like sadness. A lot went down in that area. It's where my yoga studio was that just imploded. I was just a local everywhere. It's this cute street. And I was there and just everything had changed. And I felt this sadness because it had been such a potent time in my life that year. Like I moved there so sad and I never lived alone. But living there alone, I became so happy and independent and complete in a lot of ways. It was such a beautiful time. I did my yoga training there in that time, my yoga certification training. And it was just like a really beautiful time. And so all of this is building up like light guys. How cool is life? If we're willing to play and like connect dots, the mind loves it. Like I didn't have to know why I felt sad. It's fine. Like you can process and clear the emotion without that. But it's also really fun. I think, and I do this with my clients too. It's like, are there dots? Like, is your system connecting dots for you? And just having that awareness, like, oh my gosh, moving all this energy, going through all my stuff. We're at a year anniversary of like a really intense period of both breaking up and then getting back together. And John's home this weekend, like I was like being with him again, felt so good. And just everything's there and it's okay. It is so okay for those emotions to come up because they're coming up to be processed and felt and moved and released. They don't need to be stuck in your body. That's why if you, you know, let go of the ball, right? If you're trying to hold the ball underwater, if you're doing as a form of distraction, whether it's conscious or not, from the feeling, if you let go, yeah, it's going to shoot way up, but it will also land again. (sighs) Right? Take a breath. Honor that your body is brilliant. Your body is here supporting you, helping you, guiding you, and processing stuff that you don't even know what it's doing. And can we allow that to happen? Can we give it space to do so? So after that awareness, already just that connection, I was like, okay, 
you know what? It's fine. There's nothing wrong. I just feel a little off. It's fine. We had a beer, had pizza. I went home that night. Actually, another effective tool at, you know, settling emotions is food and alcohol. (laughs) But because I am who I am and I have my awareness, I was very intentional. I was like, I didn't want to have much of a buzz. So I had like a low alcohol beer, got home, chilled out for a little bit. And then I decided, okay, time to go handle these emotions. (laughs) Saturday night party, right? Let's use our tools, people. So I went into bed at like 830 and I did an hour tapping and I moved a lot of emotion and slept really well that night. And woke up on Sunday, yesterday, and just felt really clear energy-wise and really excited to continue on this movement of making space in my life. And I had energy, like in the documentary, they talk about all these different people who started kind of following this minimalist lifestyle, which... I don't think like I'm fully heading toward a minimalist lifestyle, but I'm heading toward a more minimalist lifestyle (laughs) and just a more intentional one. But all these people were talking about how once they started on this path, like things got lighter. They had more energy, right? They felt more inspired in life. They had more desire to exercise, right? A lot of them realized that they were living in this really consumer forward world where they were just working and working and working and killing themselves with their work only to realize that if they live a simpler lifestyle, they don't need to continue making more money forever. They can have more space and time in their days. A lot of them quit their jobs that they knew, right, that were keeping up with this lifestyle, sold their homes and moved into these smaller, simpler homes in the woods working remotely. And it was like these massive shifts that happened. And of course, that's where I'm headed. I'm like, yeah, John, you can quit your job. We can move to the woods. We can work remotely. And then I'm like, okay, don't overwhelm him. Don't overwhelm you. Don't overwhelm your mind. Let's start where we're at, which is let's first get rid of stuff. Let's first make space. Let's first be really intentional about what comes into the home and really intentional about the space that you're living in now. Let's start here. And I invite you too to look at that. Like, are there drawers that are cluttered, right? And heavy. I was even looking at like my quote rag towels, right? And I'm like, do I need all of these towels? Like how many times am I using these old towels? And I'm like, no, I'll keep four of them. (laughs) They'll live with the other towels. Like they were in this other place, taking up this other space. And so yesterday I had this like resurgence of energy where then I wanted to like clean things. And then this morning I had this energy that I woke up with at least where I was like, oh, I just feel inspired and clear to get things done. Like work felt easy. And then I went to the post office. Finally, I've been needing to do this for months and got boxes so I can send my clients their client gifts. (laughs) And this is this thing that it takes me a long time to do that. So far it has. And I love collecting gifts for people, but then like I get blocked. I'm like, I can't go to the post office. I can't mail it. Well, I did it today. It was no problem, no effort. I'm like, oh. And so when you look around at your life, when you start to make more space, you're not just making space to fill it. But I think the more uncomfortable thing is creating space and being with it. Seeing what energy, what light is created from just having space. When I opened my coffee cupboard this morning, I was like, oh my gosh, it's not just filled with things and mugs. It just has in there what I want and love and need. And it it does feel weird to have open space. I have a shelf right here in my lounge or in my closet that's just open. And it's so weird. I'm like, well, what goes there? Well, nothing has to go there. (laughs) And we get to, again, 
challenge what we're told. So my final piece here is that we're constantly being told to buy more, right? Do more, be better. If you buy this, then it will, it's aspirational marketing, right? I was a marketing and advertising major at college and we're telling people a story of who they'll be if they have this thing. And it's really freaking effective. It's so effective that we don't realize that's what's happening. (laughs) And so another of my quests, actually, I also did this this weekend. I emptied out all my email inboxes. I have four email accounts. And they're all under 15 emails in them. Oh my gosh, did that felt good. And with that, I decided to unsubscribe from everything that I don't want or need or that's selling me something. I have all these clothing companies, right? All of these businesses that, look, I love them and that's why I signed up, but I also don't need to be told every single day, here's what's new, here's what you need to buy, here's what's on sale, here's what you're going to miss out on because that's triggering in my brain, like, I got to buy this. I have to spend this money. I need more things. If I buy this, then I'll be that. This will make me happy, right? This will give me this identity. I'm very susceptible to that. And so since Friday, when I clean that out, every morning I check my email and then I go unsubscribe, 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 unsubscribe. And it's so freeing. You really have to take like at least a week to get the bulk of your unsubscribes. You can't do it really in one day because they just keep coming in. And I'm like, oh, I forgot I was even unsubscribed. Like I spend so much time deleting emails. Well, it's almost just barely more time to actually unsubscribe from them. So I'm releasing myself. I deleted email off of my phone, which works for me because I was also getting all those emails on my phone. I, I unfollowed every single person on Instagram. Crazy, right? I actually did this two weeks ago, by the way, because of what was happening on Instagram. I was going on. I was like, oh, what do they have? I want this. I want to buy that. And I just noticed that everything that I was consuming in some way was this like buy stuff. And I'm at this place right now where one, I love buying stuff. I always do. Like I see that about myself, but I don't want to just be mindlessly buying anymore. And really where I want my money to go is intentionally, right? To local businesses. And really my money is going toward personal development, coaching, (laughs) and self-improvement. Because ultimately, if I pour the money into my own, you know, mental, physical, emotional health, you can't really fail with that. I mean, I am a coach. So of course I believe in paying for coaching because I think we get way more out of it than we put in financially to coaching. I think it's one of the best investments anyone can make. And that's like where I'm seeing things going. So it's crazy to pull yourself away from everything that's telling you what you need. And the documentary talks about this and it really talks about how in our consumerism society, like everything's telling us what we want and need so that we don't we're not necessarily connected to what we want and need because we're just told. And so it's such a powerful way to call back your own energy and attention by saying, bye, (laughs) like not looking at that, even if it's just for a month, right? It doesn't have to be permanent. It doesn't have to be these drastic changes, but if you pull away from that stuff for a month and then you check in with yourself, right? Give yourself space. And you start to ask like, well, what do I want? Like, what is my aesthetic? What is my design style? What pieces do I want in my home? How do I want to use the space in my home? What clothing do I want to wear, right? How do I want to do my hair? Like, what do I want? Not based on what is popular or trendy or what everyone says you should want. And it's a real mind F. (laughs) This happens all the time when I work with clients, I'm like, well, what do you want? They're like, I don't know. You know, they might be serving their family, right? Here's what, you know, I'm always thinking about what other people want. But what do you want? But in order to ask that question, what do I want? What do I like? What do I need? Who am I? You need to have space without stimulation, 
right? Without other people telling you what's cool, what's good, what's hot or not. And to sit in your essence. She's in there, right? Your natural desires and needs are in there. Your body is guiding you, even if it's, I need to take a nap or I want to take a nap every afternoon and I don't think I can because society tells me I have to be working. What do you want and need? Taking the space, sitting with yourself, removing the distractions, removing the constant barrage of information that is telling you what to think. Oh my God, I mean, we are under a freaking spell, people. We are told what to think, and if you think that's not true, (laughs) start to look around, right? Our media companies, right, even the news companies, like, they're telling us what we should think, what we should believe. And the smart ones of us are going to start to see through that and be like, wait, let me check in with me. What is my body telling me? right? What is my system telling me? What is my truth telling me? What am I sensing, right? Your spidey senses, your sixth sense. What are you picking up on intuitively that you've been dismissing? What's filtering through that you want to say, you know what? I'm choosing to not let this through anymore, to not let this dictate my belief system, my body, who I am, how I treat people around me how I see others, right? We're just painted a picture of what to believe and it's media, right? It's the news, it's social media, it's all the emails selling us stuff, telling us stuff. And we're in this beautiful place where simply by taking space, by making space in your digital life, your physical life, your emotional life, you can start to see through the bullshit (laughs) and come back to self, right? Release what's not serving you physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, and be in your own essence. And that is one of the most powerful things you have to do as a human. Uh, I don't know what the quote is, but your attention is one of the biggest powerhouses, right? Where the attention goes, energy flows. You have the power to choose what you give your attention and energy to. So what are you going to choose? Oh, I didn't actually think the episode was going to head in that direction, but I love it, right? There's so much connected to this conversation and it can start as simply as cleaning out your closet you know, reconnecting to your own sense of style, removing extra junk from your car, right? From your glove compartment, from your makeup drawer, from your desk drawer, and reclaiming your energy and your physical space and your emotional space and where you give your attention. So with that, oh, so great to speak to you all. I'm awoken from my nap and Thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging on. This was a longer episode, 44 minutes. And I always like to wind us back to truth, (laughs) to self. And so as always, thank you so much for listening. If you're really craving this fall to create more space in your life, energetic, physical, emotional, then I have two spaces left to work one-on-one. And this would just be for, you could just do it for one month. (laughs) I'm opening it up for one month, two months, or three months, which I don't normally do. But my inner voice guided me to not do one-to-one coaching in December. And with that, I realized, okay, well, if someone wants to work with me for October, November, they can. And they can also continue the third month into January, but we'll take December off. But also, I am changing my prices, so a lot's coming in January. So if you want to get in now (laughs) with my current rate, it's a steal, so I highly recommend it. And 
Then there's some other changes coming to the structure and everything in January. I'm still really solidifying what that means. So it's supporting you. It's supporting me. There's going to be a client portal where you'll have additional resources. And I'm really excited about that. But if you're, you've been feeling the nudge to explore this work together, to create space in your life, to clean out your emotional closets, I know, so that you can be slingshotted forward with energy and really see yourself clearly oh, and hear yourself maybe for the first time stepping into that power, that excitement, that joy that comes from you, right? That comes from coming back to self, this journey to self, then I invite you to join me as an insight one-to-one client. And I have just two spots, okay? I'm really intentional about who I bring into my space, right? In terms of coaching clients. And so I would love to have you join. This is a very special opportunity to do it for one month or two months. Usually it's three or six. So jump on that if you're feeling called to. You can send me an email to dana at alignful, A-L-I-G-N-F-U-L dot com, or send me a DM on Instagram, and I'll put both of those links in the show notes. So if it's right and aligned, I would love nothing more than to work with you. Fall is such a beautiful time to tie up loose ends, right? Create space to hunker down for the winter if you're on this side of the world where we're moving into fall and winter, or if you're on the other side of the world with spring and summer. I love working with the seasons. So let me know. This is the last opportunity to get in with the current structure and price. So I'm so excited for our work together. And otherwise, I will catch you next week for another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. As always, if this would resonate with anyone you know, please share the episode. You can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans or find me on my website at alignful.com.